हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू बाजीराव आई ए एस अकेडमी इंटरव्यू गाइडेंस प्रोग्राम सो इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस वन ऑफ द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज सेंटर स्टेट रिलेशंस नाउ सेंटर स्टेट रिलेशंस आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अ फेडरल पॉलिटी लाइक इंडिया राइट सो इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन हैज प्रोवाइडेड फॉर फेडरल सिस्टम फॉर अस राइट सो इन फेडरल सिस्टम देर इज अ फेडरल गवर्नमेंट एंड यूनिट्स and the governance is actually a decentralized governance right so india has been following a decentralized model of governance where we have a separate government at the federal level and separate government even in units so however even though indian constitution has provided for federalism so there are certain aspects which have been uh, you know uh, resulting in a conflict between center and states whether it is over centralization uh, by the central government like uh, the goods and services tax tax or indian constitution or indian federalism is very often called as a sui generis model of federalism that is a unique model of federalism where the powers are tilted towards the center so therefore in this context we need to understand the center state the status of center state relations now it is not just important for your mains examination but it is also important for your interview as well because in interview there are several questions which are based on the current status of center state relations what are the major issues between the center and states now if you carefully follow the newspapers regularly or if you Uh, regularly follow our daily news analysis you may have come across the issues related to the state government or the elected government in states like kerala tamil nadu and the governor okay so therefore in this context it is very important for us to understand the status or the issue of the center state relations now firstly we have to understand that india is a federal polity as i have already told you now in this context we need to understand how are the powers and functions are actually divided in such a federal setup right so in this federal setup the powers and functions are divided between the federal uh, the U, uh, the federal government as well as the federal units so therefore in this context indian constitution has provided for a federal setup now the constitution has provided a separate or divided the legislative executive and financial functions between the center and states so this effectively means that the center and states the legislative executive and financial functions are clearly divided by the indian constitution so therefore the constitution has also established an integrated judicial system so when we talk about integrated judicial system it is a federal feature of the indian constitution right so integrated judicial system is a federal feature of the indian constitution and independent judicial system is actually a unitary form or unitary feature of the indian constitution so therefore this integrated judicial system will uphold the federal as well as the state laws okay so the center state relations cut across the following three subject matters okay so below here i have given you the subject matters through which the center state relations were actually uh, you know divided so firstly the legislative relations now when we talk about the legislative relations so again the legislative relations were further categorized into union list state list as well as concurrent list so i hope you know about union list where the union parliament has the sole authority to make laws and state list and similar to parliament at the union level state legislature also have the powers to make uh, laws on the subjects which are in state list now when we talk about the concurrent list in the matters which are in concurrent list both the union parliament as well as the state legislature can make laws uh, with respect to a subject which is in concurrent list 
However, when there is a clash between uh, the union parliament and state legislature with respect to a subject in the concurrent list, the union law or the law which is made by the parliament will prevail. Okay, so this is the categorization of legislative powers between union and states. Secondly, we have to talk about the administrative relations as well. So here it is given a little wrong. Okay, so this is administrative relations. Now, when we talk about the administrative relations, the constitution itself has established interstate council under Article 263 of the Indian Constitution. Right. So apart from Article 263 interstate council, so we also have the interstate commerce zonal councils. So all these factors were related to the administrative relations between the union as well as the states. So, however, you have to understand that interstate council is a constitutional body. Okay. So, however, the journal council is not a constitutional body. Now, when we talk about the financial relations, so it specifically deals with the distribution of taxes between the center as well as the state governments. So, we have the finance commission. So, the finance commission has been provided by the Indian constitution. So, every five years, the president appoints a finance commission. Okay, so it is tasked with the devolution of taxes or distribution of taxes between the center as well as the states. Now, because of the conflictual nature of center state relations over a period of time, different governments have appointed different committees to look into the matter of the center state relations. So, Sarkaria Commission and Punchi Commission have come up with important recommendations for center state or improving center state relations. Now, apart from these two commissions, we also have National Commission to review working of the constitution. That is also a very important commission with respect to center state relations and similar to that the Rajamanar commission is also one of the prominent commission it is very important okay so after that we have to understand the administrative matters very briefly okay so before we discuss about the issues between the center and state governments we have to discuss briefly uh, about the uh, you know administrative relations and uh, legislative relations and even the financial relations between the center and states and the relevant constitutional provisions now here article 256 to 263 which is mentioned in part 11 of the Indian Constitution. So please remember these articles, Article 256 to 263, which is part 11 of the Indian Constitution. So this specifically deals with the administrative relations between center and states. Okay, so this is specifically deals with the administrative relations between center and states. Now, when we talk about the constitutional provisions, uh, uh, which uh, talks about or which mentions about administrative relations article 256 of the Indian uh, Constitution so what does article 256 says okay so every state's executive power is to be exercised in such a manner as to ensure compliance with the laws made by the Union Parliament okay so this is what article 256 says Okay. Now, every state's executive. Now, in state level also, there's an executive, legislature and judiciary. So, therefore, every state's executive power is to be exercised in such a manner as to ensure that such a power is in compliance with the laws which are already made by the Union Parliament. So, apart from Article 256, we also have Article 257 of the Indian Constitution. Now, this 257 uh, specifically talks about the control of Union over states in certain cases. Okay. Now, in certain cases, the Union government have the control of the state governments and state government machinery and, uh, you know, even uh, the legislative functions, executive functions and even uh, the financial functions. So, this article, Article 256, specifically talks about the control of Union over the states in certain cases. Now, uh, when we talk about the emergencies, so we know that there are certain emergencies. Okay. So, a president's rule is an emergency a national emergency an emergency at the state level right so uh, when the case in the case of national emergency 
so the center has the uh, executive power okay the center will acquire the executive power to direct any state regarding the manner in which the executive power has to be exercised in the state okay the center gives directions to the state how the executive power should be exercised in particular state during the national emergency okay so this is also pertaining to the administrative relations between center and state so after that the president's rule as well okay so article 356 talks about president's rule so union government can directly take control over the state machinery so we all know that the governor will become responsible for the governance at the state level the president uh, that actually means the central government takes over any state's government functions so these are briefly the administrative relations between the center and states in various cases and as mentioned by the indian constitution now after that we will briefly talk about the financial matters between the union government as well as state so earlier we talked about the administrative matters now when we talk about the financial matters article 268 to 293 okay so these are contained in part 12 of the indian constitution okay so they specifically deal with the financial relations or financial matters between the union government as well as the state governments so firstly we need to talk about the allocation of taxes right so when uh, we talk about the allocation of taxing powers parliament and state legislature so they have the exclusive powers uh, to levy taxes on various subjects which are incorporated in union list and the state list now when it comes to the levy of taxes in a particular state the state legislature will become all responsible okay so therefore parliament and state legislature have their own jurisdiction with respect to levy of taxes so there are certain powers i mean what does residuary powers means so there are uh, certain powers which are not in the state list union list or concurrent list so however with respect to the residuary powers union parliament is all powerful to make any legislation or to make any law with respect to any subject in the residuary list okay so the residuary power of taxation will also lies with the parliament itself okay so when we talk about the grants in aid so this is also part of the financial relation between the union government as well as states so article 275 clause 1 okay so article 275 clause 1 so parliament can issue grants in aid of the revenues to such states as parliament may determine and dif different sums may be fixed for different states now uh, if you look at the disbursement of revenues uh, or disbursement of grants in aid to different states so different states will get a different sum of amount okay so based on the revenue deficit of those states so based on the revenue deficit the center will provide grants in aid for those states however this has the constitutional backing article 275 clause 1 talks about this constitutional backing to grants in aid for those states who incur the revenue losses okay so after that article 282 the union or state may make any grants for any public purpose so these two articles article 282 as well as article 275 clause 1 talks about providing grants or grants in aid now after that we will also briefly talk about the legislative matters executive administrative as well as the legislative matters now when we talk about the legislative matters so it deals uh, with article uh, so part 11 of the indian constitution actually deals with the legislative relations between the center as well as states so article 245 to 255 so these constitutional provisions specifically deals with the legislative matters between the union as well as the states okay so different aspects in the center state relations uh, we have to understand union list state list 
concurrent list and article 248 now article 248 talks about the residuary powers so as i have already told you what does the residuary powers mean so union uh, when, it, when it comes to the union list so union parliament has the exclusive powers to make any legislation on the matters which are included in the union list now after that the state list now state legislatures have the exclusive power similar to the parliament at the union level state legislature also have the exclusive powers at the state level to make legislation on matters which are incorporated in the state list so after that we need to talk about the concurrent list as well so as i have already told you that in subjects which are in the concurrent list both the state legislature as well as the union parliament have the same powers with respect to making a law on those subjects however when it comes to a conflicting legislations on same subject which is mentioned in the concurrent list then the law which is being made by the union parliament shall prevail okay so this is what the concurrent list now article 248 so this specifically talks about the matters which are in the residuary subject okay so residuary powers are actually given to the center now the, it is unlike us what what is uh, the case in us in us the residuary powers are being vested with the respective states however there are various committees which actually recommend that the residuary powers should be given to the states rather than the center so because we have the unique model of federalism where the powers uh, used to uh, you know uh, used to tend towards the center the residuary powers are generally lies with the central government and parliament of india alone can make legislation on the subjects not included in the about three list so if there is any subject which is not part of about three list which is mentioned in the residuary list under article 248 of the indian constitution okay so these are the legislative executive and administrative matters between the union and the state governments now in this context we have to understand the major issues which pertaining to center state relations in india okay so what are the major issues relates to center state relations so there are different issues which are major concern for uh, the present uh, federal form of government in india so firstly we need to talk about the allocation of resources now the allocation of resources is also a major problem and distribution of resources is also a major problem so according to various reports the major responsibility for providing welfare benefits or providing infrastructure lies on the state governments however majority of the revenue is lies with the central government so there's a huge mish, mismatch between uh, you know uh, center and state governments with respect to income and spending or expenditure so therefore this has been creating some sort of uh, you know discontent disaffection among the federal uh, federal units towards the union government okay so there's a dispute between center and states with respect to allocation of resources uh, that specifically includes funds taxes and other benefits okay so recently uh, the the central government has introduced gst goods and services tax under article 10 uh, the constitutional amendment act of 101 okay so therefore through gst revenue collection and revenue sharing have been streamlined okay this is a good legis uh, this is a good uh, legislation but what about those states uh, who lost revenue because of the goods and services tax now there are various states like gujarat maharashtra tamil nadu and even telangana so they are major manufacturing uh, bases major uh, producing bases so they are losing a lot of revenue because of introduction of the gst tax so they have expressed various concerns with respect to the goods and services tax so the center has been providing compensation even during covid-19 pandemic the center was not able to pay the compensation as well so that was a major bone of contention between the center state relations okay so after that we need to talk about uh, challenging center laws 
so uh, we talked about state list uh, union list concurrent list and residuary powers now kerala has filed a suit in the supreme court of india seeking to declare the caa as unconstitutional now what is caa constitu citizenship amendment act right so citizenship amendment act provides citizenship to indians okay so uh, sorry uh, citizenship to certain individuals who migrated to india to escape religious persecution however this is being provided to very few religious groups for example hindus sikhs jains buddhists and even uh, you know uh, christians however the kerala government this is a central legislation however the kerala government has filed a petition in the supreme court to declare the citizenship amendment act as unconstitutional providing citizenship to non indians who migrated to india from other countries especially bangladesh afghanistan and pakistan okay so now the states are also at uh, you know at the level that they are challenging the legislations which are made by the center so uh, apart from kerala we have to talk about chatisgarh as well okay so chatisgarh has filed a similar suit okay similar to what kerala has filed so it has also challenged the overall validity of the uh, national investigation agency okay so you know when it was passed it was passed in the year uh, uh, you know after the mumbai attacks national investigation agency so this is a similar like similar to like a anti terrorist agency anti terrorism agency okay so therefore chatisgarh has even challenged the validity of the national investigation agency act now after that in recent times you have very often seen the frequent misuse of article 356 so uh, that we have seen uh, in the case of karnataka maharashtra madhya pradesh arunachal pradesh uttarakhand so therefore the center has been using the governor uh, as a way uh, or as an instrument to overthrow the democratically elected governments so this is the case especially with respect to states which are mostly opposition ruled okay so uh, article 356 was uh, you know always employed by the uh, central government okay so it is mainly for the political purposes so there are different parties in power bit, uh, in the center and states and you know this has led to the breakdown of the constitutional machinery now so this is only used for political purposes so uh, after that the office of the governor is also in news in recent times so especially with respect to uh, telangana state tamil nadu kerala west bengal so uh, what ha- what is happening in these states the state legislative assembly has been passing the legislations uh, passing certain bills however any bill to become an act the governor must give his or her assent so if governor cannot give his assent those bills will not become uh, a legislations so now uh, in the case of tamil nadu uh, the governor uh, rn ravi has been using the pocket veto and not taking any decision on the bills which are passed by the Tamil Nadu state legislative assembly and this is what is happening with the Kerala government as well so therefore the governor the institution of governor has become uh, you know uh, it has open for disputes a lot of disputes have been revolving around this institution so therefore there is a need to reform the institution of governor as well he is not just uh, an agent of the center okay so ra- rather he is uh, the head of the constitutional uh, machinery in the state okay so rather he is the constitutional head of the state so in this context what measures can ensure harmonious center state relations so earlier i have told you that various governments have appointed different commissions or different committees over a period of time so they are sarkariya commission 1983 
पूंछी कमीशन टू जीरो नेशनल कमीशन टू रिव्यू वर्किंग ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन राजमनर कमीशन सो वॉट सरकारी कमीशन हैज़ रिकमेंडेड सो द सरकारी कमीशन हैज़ रिकमेंडेड दैट द ऑल इंडिया सर्विसेस सो दिस इज ऑल्सो वन ऑफ द वे uh the center used to control the states so in this context the sarkaria commission has recommended that all india services should be strengthened and more such services should be created for example uh, you know uh, indian medical service indian education service indian judicial service such such services have to be created and the second most important recommendation of the sarkaria commission uh, is the union should occupy only that much field of concurrent subject on which uniformity of policy is needed and leave the rest for the state action so this is in line with providing more powers uh, providing more legislative powers providing more jurisdiction more space to the state governments and this is what the state governments have been demanding apart from more financial resources so punji commission was also appointed and this commission has recommended that the devolution of powers to the local bodies to act as institutions of self government should be constitutionally defined okay so rather uh, in this case it is largely left to the state legislative assemblies to decide so what sort of powers the state legislative assembly should give to the local bodies so however in order to ensure that there is no discretion of the uh, state legislative assemblies when it comes to providing more and more powers to the local bodies so it has recommended that there should be a constitutionally uh, you know defined powers for local bodies and apart from that it has also recommended that there should be a fixed 5 year tenure for governors so that it provides a security of tenure so they will no longer depend on the pleasure doctrine of the president and apart from that it has also recommended that the governor removal uh, should only be through the impeachment of of the, at the state legislative assembly level so along the similar lines as that of the president of the parliament so however in the present context uh, it seems little difficult okay so impeachment by the state legislative impeachment of the governor by the state legislative assembly and these are the major recommendations of the sarkaria commission as well as the punchi commission with respect to the uh, center state relations now apart from that we have to discuss about few more measures okay so firstly we need to talk about the center state institutions so we have various institutions to strengthen to improve the center state relations one is interstate council as per article 263 of the indian constitution and then finance commission article 280 niti ayog so these institutions have to be strengthened so they will help in ensuring a smooth and better relationship between the center and states so apart from that the fiscal federalism is also another area so that has to be more focused now the state governments have been uh, you know they have a certain disaffection towards the center because uh, recent gst the goods and services tax have made that states depend more and more on the center for financial resources so fiscal federalism ensures that distribution of resources between center and states in a fair and transparent manner center and states should work towards promoting fiscal federalism to ensure equitable distribution of resources now after that we should also talk about the most important reform or measure that is revisiting the seventh schedule so revisiting the seventh schedule actually involves so seventh schedule talks about the union list state list and concurrent list so therefore more and more powers should be provided or should be given to the states okay so some scholars have advocated further decentralization of the schedule by introducing the local self governance or local government list now we have a uh, union list state list concurrent list and similar to this we should also have the local government list so that will give a more you know impetus so that will further strengthen the local governance as well okay so that's all about the center state relations 
or the federalism in India. Okay, so we have not discussed this in such an exhaustive manner. Okay, so this is a very vast topic to discuss. I, however, we have discussed this very briefly. So, however, over a period of time, we will also uh, keep tab of all the important events that have been taking uh, taking place with respect to the federal structure. Okay, so please uh, like this video and also write important suggestions and your doubts in the comment section so that we can answer your every query and please subscribe to our youtube channel thank you